Let's talk about AI gateways in this video and how to successfully rage bait Twitter, which I apparently did with one of these tweets. That is why I'm covering this in this video on how do you create an AI gateway effectively. Uh, the video itself is not a rage bait, but it did upset a lot of people, including Theo from t 3 chat who has his own app with a custom setup and i'm going to show you how these companies like theos and other companies are able to roll out access to new models like gemini 3 and so on extremely fast the moment these are available over apis right so let's talk about this in detail if you see in the market there are multiple such products that exist the ones that i know and that are popular are open router for example is one versal has its own ai gateway that they have released which is very much coupled with their ai sdk as well and cloudflare also has an offering i've not used this but they exist and this is basically the same thing so you are able to plug in and change a couple of strings here and there and the model just changes the underlying model just completely changes let's talk about how these things fundamentally work. I'm not gonna go into a specific architecture. For example, Versal use, might use different deployment techniques or deploy it somewhere inside their own infrastructure. Cloudflare might do it in a different way, but I'm gonna give you a general feel of how this thing generally works, right? So let's try to figure out, let's try to engineer this on our own, right? So see, AI gateway, which is a very fancy word of a reverse proxy, right? This is just a reverse proxy. There's nothing magical going on on AI gateway at all. Whatever you guys are calling this, whether that's Versal, Open Router, or any of these, this is just a reverse proxy and reverse proxy have, proxies have existed for decades, right? There have been systems like Nginx, like HA proxy, so many backend systems that have been there, which do reverse proxy. You can write your own proxy systems as well. It's not a big deal. All right, but with specifically to AI gateway, like when we have AI as the keyword here, it involves a few more things, a few extra things. So let's talk about that. Now, first things first is that you have a client here, right? A computer, a app application, an app or a mobile app or whatever website or web app or whatever, which is supposed to use a specific model, right? So we have a lot of these AI models. Now you have OpenAI as a provider, you have Anthropic as a provider, you have Google as a provider. And when I mention provider, I mean like the real companies that are making like real models, right? You have Mistral as a provider, you have, you know, I don't exactly know who owns Kimi models, but you have Kimi K2 and so on. These are like Chinese models. You have DeepSeek as a provider. So there are a lot of players in this space, right? Which you can try and learn about. And of course, there are a lot more companies as well. You have XA, XAI, for example, Grok and all. So you have those companies as well. What happens is that most of them are similar. So most of them are following OpenAI's lead because OpenAI was the first model, first company that sort of gave a programmatic access to GPT, right? Which is where how these things get, got started. So most of these companies actually have a way of handling request and response. So you request for a specific thing and you get a response from the API, right? So OpenAI pioneered this in a way because they were the first ones to bring this over API. So they decided a specific style of request and response. Request means like how does your application make a request to the API, which is the, like the underlying model, right? So this AI gateway, let's just say that this is talking to AI provider, which is like underlying provider, which is Grok or OpenAI or any of these. And then this AI provider is internally configured in a specific way to accept request and on a specific way to respond as well. So let's look into one of them. Let's pick up OpenAI, for example. So if you look into this OpenAI, and if I switch to curl, for example, which shows us like the real thing that's happening without the SDK magic, you see that this data that you pass over here, so you see that there is one model parameter that you're passing. Then you have a messages, which is an array, which has then a bunch of role and con content, role content, and so on. So this is like an array, which has a sequential order of what's going on, right? So this is one of the first variations of the one of the first API standards that OpenAI brought in, which is the chat API, right? This is the chat API, which a lot of these other model providers, by the way, also follow, right? So you'll see a lot of similarities in syntax, but not quite because a lot of these, for example, let's, let's pull up another example. Let's take a look at Claude. For example, in case of Claude, you can see that the API is again, somewhat similar to OpenAI standard itself, that you have a messages array, which has a bunch of messages. But if I jump to the files API section, for example, let's say you want Claude to analyze a PDF or something. So you see, 
see that this architecture starts to split up a little. So now you have to upload the file first to Anthropic server, which will give you some object. And then you have to pass down that as a type document and source and type and file ID, right? So this is where the model starts. The API standards start to diverge because this is not a set standard or anything like that. If you look at OpenAI standard for this, all right, or even better example is that if you look at vision, for example, images, in this case, you can see that Anthropic requires you to pass either a base 64 or a direct URL. That's also fine. You can pass that as well. But the type here is image. But in case of OpenAI, the type is image URL if you want to pass image URL. So you see that these distinctions starts to happen as you are building specific APIs for every single provider, right? So what this AI gateway does effectively is that it provides a normalization layer. So this is more than that. This is reverse proxy plus normalization layer. Now you might say that, hey, Mehul, why do we need a normalization layer as a separate system, right? This can obviously be part of just an SDK or something, right? Which is what exactly AI SDK is. So if you look at AI SDK, for example, from Versal, this is basically that only. AI SDK is nothing but a normalization layer packaged as an application. But what you also might need, what is also helpful is that you also, if you have some stats on what's going on. For example, because this is a reverse proxy, this is sitting in the critical path of your AI provider and the end user, the end client, right? So what you can effectively do is you can sniff over here. So you can sniff on requests and responses. You can do a bunch of interesting things, rather I should say. The first thing is that obviously you can see who's doing what for maybe analytical reasons. Second thing you can do is you can normalize, obviously that is important. The third thing you can do is you can also rotate API keys or providers transparently. Right, so this is one of the interesting things over here is that this system, again, this can be part of the normalization layer itself, I would say. But what you can also do as a system or as a normalized system is that you can also have providers with their specific order of execution, right? So you might want to execute the query first with Gemini. If that doesn't happen, you want to fall back to Anthropic and then finally to chat GPT because of whatever, you have more credits or something. So this reverse proxy can help you do that. And last but not the least, this can also provide an analytics layer over here, right? So it can see how many tokens are input, how many tokens are output, and it can do a bunch of queries on that. So you, it, it could make it easier for you to just be this AI gateway be the analytical layer, whether that's for billing, whether that's for your own internal usage and so on. And you, your application layer just handles the, you know, the calling part. Now, well, how do you build this? How do you build a scalable AI gateway on your own, right? You might want to deploy it using a provider like Versal, for example, or Open Router, or Cloudflare or any of these, or you might just want to build it on your own, right? Because you just want to go to the model or the API provider directly. Now, how do you do that? Well, again, just like I mentioned, an AI gateway basically has two parts, right? So this is in disguise. This is not just a single system. This is actually a two system, two things system. The first is a normalization layer, normalization layer. And effectively, that is all you want most of the time, right? You don't really need an AI gateway. If you just have a normalization layer, you can at least start to make queries and you can start to just use the AI directly. And the second part, obviously, is the reverse proxy. This can be an independent system in case if you are getting a very high load of usage or, you know, you just want to make it highly available and so on. So the first thing is that this system, by nature, if you look at AI Gateway, this is a high wall time system, but low CPU time system. Why do I say that? Because if you look at the architecture of an AI gateway, you would know that behind the scenes, it's talking to a model, right? So you have a model over here, which could be like, let's say GPT-5 or something. This model takes a lot of time to think, right? So this would return in a few seconds of time, right? And it'll keep on streaming as well. So the first, the time to first byte will be few large seconds, and then you have to, you know, just stream that response back to whatever you are doing. So what happens is that if you are making this AI gateway serverless, you cannot choose a provider that charges you by wall time. That would be the death of your service and it will be the end of everything. So again, there are two options here to go serverless where you would deploy your gateway finally and there would be obviously server full where you are managing your own servers. Making it server full in general is a different ballpark game altogether. So I would not talk about that because again, that comes with its own challenges of upscaling, health checks, all of that. So we'll focus on making this just serverless for now. 
So in case of serverless, the only two good providers that I know right now are Cloudflare Worker, which charges you on CPU time and Versal's new Fluid Compute, which also charges you on CPU time. Now these two providers are the only providers that you should be using in a serverless environment, even though you can use systems like AWS Lambda. I would highly recommend not to use AWS Lambda because your bill would be extremely large because AWS Lambda, imagine that you, this model takes maybe like 10 seconds of time to respond back, right? And you then do a little bit of processing and it gets to 11 seconds. However, your actual work, the actual CPU time that you spent on this request was just 10 milliseconds. Cloudflare and Versal's new fluid compute model will charge you only 10 milliseconds, but AWS Lambda will charge you for the whole 11 seconds. In fact, I strongly feel that is the whole reason Versal's team actually decided that we need to, in order to win the AI race, we need to build a new model model which charges on CPU time. This was not Versal's priority for the last many years, even though Cloudflare worker model has existed for very long because Versal just did not see the application or you know the delta in experience. But now they can see it because the delta is close to 100 to 1000 times in pricing because see the CPU time is very, very precious. You don't need a lot of CPU when you are just proxing a request. But the wall time for these models is extremely high. That means you can't just sit around and wait and get charged for that. And Versal probably saw that, hey, Cloudflare is actually getting ahead in this race. They are doing a lot of work because they, they have a very strong position because worker only charges on CPU time. Let's just introduce this offering. That is why Versal did it this year. But anyway, in case of serverless, you have to pick a provider that charges you on CPU time. I generally don't know any other providers except for Cloudflare and Versal. Please educate me in the comment section if you know any good providers other than these two. Right, so this is part of your equation. The first First part before even you decide like where it needs to where it needs to be deployed is the normalization layer right so this normalization layer is what you have to figure out now this can be done with ai sdk at its very core but you can go all the way down and you can just you know just manually build it i mean it's not a big thing. You just have to look into every platform that you are supposedly going to support in the coming future. Go into their curl request section. I would say avoid their Python or Node.js and all of that because see, you will not be able to see anything. The HTTP, the raw request, you'll only be able to see when you're using curl or any of these providers and implement your SDK based on the format that these are accepting, right? So you can build your own normalization layer. And in fact, that is something that I have sort of realized is not a bad idea at all. Because if you look at I mean, this could be like a really, really hot take, which I was not expecting to drop in this video, but let it be. But if you look at AI SDK, I feel that AI SDK is too bloated right now, right? And a lot of times, especially when your workflow gets complicated, that is what I've seen with Fermion. We have been implementing a, a complex workflow uh, with AI SDK. There are some bugs, which could be skill issue from our side, but it could be also bugs inside AI SDK, especially version five with tool calling, function calling. It's buggy. I can't prove it. You you know, that meme exists where you know something, but you just can't prove it. But that is the case with AI SDK, at least for my personal opinion and the work that we are doing with Fermion. And I have personally seen that an approach where we are manually building a normalization layer for these AIs is actually not a bad idea. I mean, in most cases, you want a robust chat functionality to start with. And if you're supporting like a provider like OpenAI, for example, or if you're supporting Google or Anthropic, what you will realize is that they don't break their own standards across models, right? So Google, for example, has possibly not broken their API itself for calling Gemini 3 compared to the older versions. Same for OpenAI. They will break it among each other. So there, there will be differences in requests and responses, but they won't break it for their own models, right? So yeah, not a bad idea to build it. Uh, the only thing is that this normalization layer has to happen on a platform basis. So you have to do it separately for OpenAI. You have to do it separately for Google. You have to do it separately for Anthropic. But hey, come on. I mean, we all know like you're, it's not like you're using hundreds of AI companies at a given time. So you can absolutely build it manually if you want to. The second thing is that you also have to build normalization layer across request and response both because unfortunately their responses are also not something that normalized. They respond, all these models respond in weird ways and different ways. So you'll have to build this two way. And that's basically it. That's all there is to this whole system. It's not, it's not a complex system. It's not something that will take you a lot of time. And that is why the tweet was also sarcastic or it was a rage bait because I mean, just like everyone else mentioned that it's like a configuration changer. It's 
like a one liner change and so on and the reason people were saying that because most of these ai gateways like cloudflare and vercel and open router have already done this part they have already written the normalization layer for google so that means all they have to do is pretty much change the final fetch call the final call this fetch call or that curl call or whatever you're doing internally final call that happens and you have to change this model name this one over here in most cases there might be some functionalities that gpt or you know gemini 3 brings in something new something fresh but in most cases all you have to do is just change this line of code and change the label that's using that that's why people got upset and that was the whole point of the tweet also like you know but again like a lot of people miss that so anyway that's fine so yeah that's pretty much it how you will build an ai gateway and how you will deploy it you also got my two tips on how to deploy it on serverless don't use any platform that charges you by the wall time if you want you can deploy it on your own cpu compute and all of that where you will anyway pay a fixed charge on a monthly basis or whatever but yeah serverless is cool like that's that's what cool guys use now nowadays right uh, one final closing tip is that you can also with the serverless providers what you can do is you can use something like context.wait until that is what cloudflare supports if i'm not wrong and versal also supports something i forgot like i completely forgot but there is some construct from versal as well which you can use to basically execute the task or some code after the work is done right after the call after the response is sent so you can use these metrics for doing this analytical work work right this analytics layer tokens input tokens output and so on because you can i mean the response has already been sent no need to block closing the stream you can just do this work in the background so you can do that in serverless environments very very easily right with these these sort of hooks or things that these guys give but anyway that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope there was something that you guys took away if you did not know about this architecture in general that's all for this one i will see you in the next video very soon